Back on the Steve Malsberg Show, Rick Unger filling in for Steve today as he gets a little bit of off time with his family. Uh, now one of my favorite sections of every Malsberg Show, the Malsberg Panel, part one in this case because we got a two-parter today. Joining us, Jonathan T. Gilliam, former Navy SEAL and FBI agent and president of U.S. Continued Service, and also joining us, Tom Borelli, senior fellow of FreedomWorks. Gentlemen, welcome and happy Memorial Day to you both. Good to be here. Yep. Thanks so much for uh, coming in with us. We appreciate it. Uh, look, let's uh, let's start off with this first question because this has been something that's been on my mind. We've seen a lot of situations in the past few weeks where particularly Republican candidates are finding it difficult to respond to the question as to what they would have done in President Bush's shoes uh, in terms of taking us into the Iraq war. This is now apparently leading to some frustration on the part of our veterans who went and fought that war. And they're becoming a bit upset and a bit frustrated over the fact that so many Americans may now feel that those soldiers risk their lives and so much more in vain. I'm curious what the two of you have to say about that. Let's start with Tom Borelli. Well, thanks, Rick. Yeah, I can only imagine the frustration by our veterans who actually fought in Iraq because they gave up their time, left their families, and they also probably horribly witnesses uh, friends who were killed and wounded in battle. So, and now they see the complete freefall of Iraq. So, again, I've never been a veteran, but I only could imagine the frustration of what they did putting their heart, souls, and blood into a campaign only to see it fall apart. Jonathan? Well, I agree with that. And I'll, I'll also go further in saying that um, this is one thing where the Bush administration did mess up. And I think it's carried over um, into this administration. But it's not. it didn't just start with Bush. This has been going on for a long, long time since the Clinton era um, and probably even before that in that we do not have strategic plans when we go into war. We tend to pick battles. We tend to go do big, decisive attacks. And then that's it. We don't have a plan to follow through with that. So years later, you have this going on. And I talked to one Marine earlier uh, who was, you know, saying that, you know, in World War II, we had issues, you know, with the Germans or the Japanese. And then now, you know, we're friends with them and they occupy their territories again. The difference with that and Ramadi or Fallujah is that the people that are now occupying these areas are the exact people that were fighting. So I, want, I wonder what this does as you look down the road in the future. I, I, you know, Jonathan and I have discussed this. I don't know where Tom's at on this. But I very much feel that the mistake that I believe that we made in the Iraq war puts us in a difficult position because you make an error in going into one war, you may miss the boat when it comes to fighting a war that maybe we should be fighting, say, a war against ISIS. What does this mean to us, Jonathan? Does it mean that you will have a tougher time getting volunteer soldiers if they feel like they went and risked so much mm -hmm. for no good reason? I don't think that's ever going to be the case in this country. I mean, there's certain people that just grow up knowing that in order to have freedom, you have to fight for freedom and support it. I mean, freedom is not free. You've heard that before, but that's the reality. There's always going to be patriots. What I would like to see, though, is more patriots um, serving in this country and more civilians that are not serving understanding what this service really is. I think that'll go a long way. Tom, what do you think about well, that? Well, I think we've lost a lot of political capital, which makes the politicians very afraid to engage in the one that we really may need to really fight. And I think we've lost, again, a lot of capital. It's going to be a lot harder. Yeah, this, you know, this is very frustrating to me, and it's something that we suffer a bit from in this country, I think, when we don't look at our lessons from history. Sure. You make a commitment to a war, it's not just about fighting and winning that war, it's what is the impact going to be on other wars. In any event, we're going to continue with part two of the Malzberg panel when we come back. Guys, you're going to stay with us? Yep, we'll be here. Well, if you're going to be here, and by the way, thanks for coming in on a holiday. I didn't thank you. I'll be here too, and I hope you'll be here with us. And we're back with our Memorial Day episode of the Steve Malzberg Show. Joining us for part two of our Marlsberg, Malzberg panel, John Gilliam, former Navy SEAL and FBI agent, and currently the president of U.S. Continued Service, also joining Tom Borelli, a senior fellow of FreedomWorks. So guys, let's switch it up a little bit. I'm curious what you have to say about this brouhaha that's been developing over uh, presidential candidate Mike Huckabee supporting Josh Duggar, 
uh, and saying that he deserves to be forgiven for what he did as a young teenager in molesting some, some young girls. Uh, I think what makes this so difficult for so many people, I know I am inclined to forgive people if they get themselves straightened out. Uh, at the same time, Mr. Digger, Duger, Duggar uh, works for an organization, Family Research Council, that tends to be very judgmental of people who don't see the world or live lifestyles in the way they would like. So does he deserve this kind of forgiveness? And is the Governor Huckabee putting himself in a weird spot by offering the same? Let's start with you, Tom. Well, I think Governor Huckabee certainly is putting himself in a difficult position because, as Senator Cruz says, the left media loves to talk about sex, and Huckabee just walked into this. But the families from Arkansas, there may be some, some connections there. But I think it's important to say that the one who should be given forgiveness are the people and the families that were the victims of, of this molestation. They're the ones who should be given forgiveness, not Mr. Huckabee. But does he deserve, does, does Josh uh, Duger deserve to be let off the hook. Consider, now he's, I shouldn't say let off the hook. Right. He's resigned his job. I mean, he's right. certain, I think the TV show that he's a part of uh, has been canceled or is at least on hiatus, which means it's likely to be canceled. So there has most certainly been a price to pay for this. The, the question though is, does he deserve to be forgiven? This did happen a long time ago. He was a young teenager. We're told that he did get treated for this and has found a way to resolve it and move past it. But you know, when you're somebody who makes their living casting stones, do you set yourself up uh, for, for not being entitled to that kind of forgiveness? Jonathan, what do you think? Well, having grown up in Arkansas, um, I, you know, I know the atmosphere there and the people that, uh, the great people of the state of Arkansas, um, you know, and I know Mike Huckabee, he's a Christian as am I, and he believes in forgiveness, and so do I. Um, and But does the law forgive? The law does forgive if you are a minor. That's for definite, for sure. Um, in this case, if he was, in fact, a minor, which I think they're saying, um, then the law has to, you know, do what they have to do. And if uh, forgiveness and moving on after that, that's the way it is. But, well, I will tell you this. Um, you know, when you do things like that and uh, the, the possibility of this coming out, and then you go on and you judge people in public, th there's a big problem with that. And I, I think, you know, the way anytime that these, these families like this are on TV, 19 children, there is something in my mind going on behind the scenes in that family. You don't have that many kids without an issue. Uh, and I mean, that's the a psychological problem when you're having pumping out that many kids. And I just think that there's probably more going on behind the scenes than this one guy. So. Over the weekend, the Democratic Party posted a tweet on Twitter where they got a little cheerful on Memorial Day and they did it all over a picture of President Obama. It immediately got an enormous amount of criticism. It seemed to take them a while, I think it was over an hour, before they reposted something where they basically re remembered what Memorial Day is all about, which is remembering and honoring our fallen servicemen and women. Uh, Jonathan. Did they get it straightened out in time or did they do themselves some damage? Well, I think once they did it and they didn't see the problem with it, they did the damage. I mean, it's that plain and simple. Well, they did eventually see the problem. Eventually, but see, that's but the problem. That, that, in that in itself is the problem. Not realizing what Memorial Day is all about. And you know, I've seen it on other TV stations where people are saying, hey, what's your favorite memory from Memorial Day's past or you know, from being in the military? I mean, there's nothing favorite about this. This is where we honor our fallen veterans. And for them not to see this, and they're the, one of the two parties that rule and run this country, that's a bad thing. You know, Tom, it's, it's weird. I, what Jonathan just said does ring true, not only with a lot of people, but with me. And I always feel very awkward whenever I say happy Memorial yeah, Day, right. because there's really right. nothing, nothing happy right. about it. And yet we've turned it into something that's all about the beginning of summer, not about what it should be, which is remembering those who gave the ultimate price. Well, I think that's part, you know, sadly about American culture as well. But, you know, pick your religious holiday and it's about getting presents or, or the Easter Bunny instead of the true meaning of these things. And, you know, Memorial Day, you really should remember, you know, the sacrifices, the ultimate sacrifices given by those who are defending our rights and our freedoms. And that's where the president leadership should come from and, and from both political parties. It shouldn't be a right or left thing. Right. We should be defending, you know, the memories of the people that lost their lives, defending all of us. Guys, as always. 
Thanks for uh, dropping by for another good Malzberg panel. Always my favorite part of the show. Up next, though, <clears throat> UCLA professor of psychiatry and co-author of Two Weeks to a Younger Brain, something I can stand to hear more about. Dr. Gary Small joins the program. Be here with us.